earlier this week, well, I guess we've been here a couple days, but um, I guess it was maybe yesterday, um, you had mentioned in a conversation that we were having that um, I was carrying my stepfather's shame. And so my question is, um, with regards to that, because I haven't really, uh, I guess, maybe been able to access too much shame, or I guess I don't know what it looks like, or... Mm -hmm. So I was hoping that you could address that and... Yes, certainly. Yeah. I feel shame is a big issue that a lot of people need to face, and I'd love to address the issue of shame. Um, here we're talking about shame that comes from sexual abuse. So put it into context of sexual abuse in your childhood, and there's shame related to sexual abuse in the childhood. But obviously shame comes from all sorts of things that have happened in our childhood where we were shamed by other people during our childhood. So let, let's describe what's happening a bit. And um, Usually there's a person, an adult, so, who when we were a child did something to us. And in the case of sexual abuse, they sexually abused us, obviously. So sexual, let's, let's use the uh, situation of sexual abuse, but it could be violent abuse. It could be to do with personal violence from the adult to the child. And it could be to do with even um, humiliating the child verbally and emotionally all the time. So all forms of abuse we're talking about here, whether it's physical, emotional or sexual. But let's look at the form of sexual abuse. Now, usually when this adult abuses the child in any way, whether it's violent, uh, uh, physical, emotional or sexual, the adult tells itself that it has nothing to be ashamed of. In other words, what the adult generally does is it blames the child for the adult's actions towards the child. So, for example, when the child is hit, violently abused, the adult says, it's your fault that I'm doing this because it's something you did. Does that make sense? So the adult blames the child. When the adult blames the child, this has the effect of creating openings inside of the child where the child thinks that it has something to be ashamed of. In other words, it believes, the child believes, that it is the problem. It has the shame. It is the person who is, has the problem. Does that make sense? Because the adult has taught the child to believe such things. All right? So whose shame is this really? Can you see it's not really the child's shame? It's a feeling that exists in the child of shame, but it's not really the child's shame because the child didn't abuse itself. The adult abused the child. So it's really the adult's shame that the adult has refused to own and refused to take responsibility for and now blames or projects that emotion onto the child. And because the child, being a child, doesn't have the ability to easily determine what is right and wrong within itself, it then thinks that it must be wrong, that the child has been the problem. Does that make sense? But this shame does not really belong to the child, it belongs to the adult. Most people have huge difficulties feeling shame. And yet, if they realise that almost all shame that comes from your childhood is not your own, but rather somebody else has projected at you, you would probably allow the feeling of shame to come up more frequently and to be felt. Now, there is a shame that belongs to you, the adult, now that you're an adult, and that is the shame of anything you chose to do out of harmony with love. So... Whenever we choose to do something out of harmony with love, it affects our internal um, conscience. Is that how you spell it? Yeah. 
And therefore, we generate, there is a generation, there's a law of compensation and motion that's generated as a result of anything you choose to do out of harmony with love that causes shame to begin inside of you. So I'm not talking about that shame. I'm talking about the shame that occurred during abuse that occurred as a child. That shame, the abusive shame, came from the adult. In other words, it's the refusal of the adult to honour that it is doing a shameful thing. Right? So whenever an adult has beaten you or so been violent towards you or sexually abused you or verbally abused you like you know, with sarcasm and humiliation and all those things, from God's perspective, that is the adult's shame. Does that make sense? That shame really belongs to the adult but most adults don't want to feel that shame. And so what they do is they blame the child for the shame they feel. So they actually tell the child, it's you that has been the problem. You have something to be ashamed of. You made me do it. And if quite often people who sexually abuse children say to the children, you made me do this. If you weren't this or if you weren't that or if you you know, didn't do that, or if you didn't dress provocatively here, or you didn't have walk around with nothing clothes on when you were little there, I wouldn't have done it. You know, that's what they say. And many people who violently abuse their children say, you made me do it. You didn't obey me. You didn't do what you were told. You didn't whatever. And they always finish up putting the shame onto the child. But what we need to do, understand, if we are going to process emotionally, we need to understand that the childhood shame is not really our own. It's just a feeling that's now inside of us, but it, the cause of it is not our own. So it's not our own actions that created the shame, but rather the adult's actions that created the shame. The adult has something to sh be ashamed of, not the child. And the only time we as an adult have something to be ashamed of is when we choose, as an adult, to do something that's unloving to another person. Then we have cause to be ashamed. And in fact, that shame can help correct us if we allow, if we're sensitive to the feeling of it. Does that make sense? So, Angela, you want to take it? Yeah. Um, thank you for that. So, I don't know that um, what shame feels like. Like, is that the feelings of not feeling good enough, of... Um, like never getting it right, of not being lovable. Like I feel those feelings, are those part of shame? Well, they're often a part of shame and they're all, many of them are often not true. They are true because the adult told you that they're true. And you now have re reinforced these beliefs to yourself. So you know the feeling, I am not lovable. That had to have come from somewhere. Right? And it had to have come from an adult telling you or demonstrating through their actions with you that you're not lovable. That's how, where it came from. So you not being lovable is really a measure of the adult's poor treatment of you. That's why you now you believe that you're not lovable. You still need to feel the emotion, but you would probably find it easier to feel the emotion if you understood that the emotion came from the adult and was taught to you rather than believing that the emotion is your own rather than believing that you personally are not lovable so if we look at the, the statement I am not lovable it's not a truth from God's perspective is it so from God's perspective every single person who is one of God's children and that's every single person is lovable from God's perspective in other words every single person from God's perspective will God, God loves them whether they receive that love or not. Right? Now the fact that we then believe we're unlovable had to have come from someone other than God. And usually it came from in our environment of which our parents were a large part. But it could also come from our you know, going to school and being taught, told that we're not lovable and so forth. could come from there. But when we're told we're not lovable, we eventually start telling ourselves the same message. And the problem with telling ourselves the same message is we don't feel the feeling and let go of the feeling. Do you follow me? 
because we're telling ourselves a lie. Whenever you say to yourselves, I am not lovable, you're basically telling yourself a lie from God's perspective. Does that make sense? So it's one thing to feel that you are not lovable. It's quite another thing to reinforce that belief by telling yourself that you're not lovable over and over again. Now many of you will feel you're not lovable and until you feel that completely, you will believe that you're not lovable. But you need to understand from an intellectual perspective that actually from God's perspective, everyone's lovable. So you need to understand that even the belief I am not lovable is actually a false belief. It's in you now, but it's a false belief. It's a feeling that has to come out. So it, the only way a feeling can come out is by feeling it, but it's still a false belief. And that's what you need to realize. Now, shame is the kind of feeling that where, where you feel so bad about yourself and you believe that everything that was done to you is your fault. Does that make sense? So this is the primary feeling about shame, that everything that was done to you was your fault in some way. And what I'm constantly reminding people is that, no, things that are done to you that are unloving are not your fault. It doesn't matter what condition of your soul was, they're not your fault. Because if somebody does something unloving to you, that is their fault, their responsibility, their shame, if you like, not yours. If you believe it's yours, you're, it's highly unlikely you'll f let yourself feel it. Because there'll be no point to feeling it because you believe that you are shameful. When you understand that actually this shame was projected at you by another and it was their belief of you, you can now focus on that feeling that that was their belief of you or about you rather than your belief about yourself. Does that make sense? Yeah. Now, we're getting very intellectual here already, but some of you, just me acknowledging that much of your feelings are not actually your real... like they're not yours, they're not you didn't cause them. The, the, the real cause of most of our feelings, when we're a child in particular this is, is our own families generally or adult acquaintances their projections upon us that's the real cause of the majority of our feelings as a child now when we grow up and we become an adult now we are self-responsible beings so whatever we project onto others that is unloving that is our shame no that's not there so there are times when you, at the moment, you think as an adult where you feel like that person's a terrible person, you're judging the person. Well, that's your judgment. That's not theirs. That's your shame. That's your unloving behavior. And this is what we've got to learn to stop, is learn to stop our own loving behavior, but feel about all unloving behavior that's been perpetrated towards us. Let, let it all go, in other words. Does that help, Angela? Yeah? Okay. Thank you. We go across to Selena. Thank you. Hi, I'm Selena. Um, I had a, an experience when I was a child of a sexual predator trying to pick me up, and I never told anyone. I kept it to myself. I, my mom remembered I had nightmares, but I never told anyone until I was a teenager. Sorry, say that again to me. A, a special. It was. A sexual predator? A sexual predator. Yeah, tried okay. to pick me up. I didn't even know what that was at the time. I was, I think, maybe five, four so, five. So uh, this is a real event? Yes. yes. Oh, yes. 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 Good day. And I experienced a huge amount of shame, even though I never told anyone what had happened. And he didn't actually touch me, or, but the insinuation was there of what he wanted, mm -hmm. even though I really didn't know what it was. Yep. I, I felt a huge amount of shame, even though I didn't understand the experience, yep. uh, so much so that I couldn't tell anyone at yep. all. Yep. So where would the shame come from in that? Well, sexual instance? predators are very interesting in, in, their, in their ability to feel children's emotions, in particular children's emotions. Mm -hmm. Any child who has been made open to the feeling that it's their fault, 
and anything is their fault. When bad things happen to you, it's automatically your fault. Yes, and okay. usually it's our parents that make mm -hmm. us open to such a feeling yeah. that any bad thing that happens to us is your fault. And the parents do this through positive, through reinforcement. Like, so when they're smacking us, they say, it's, not, it's your fault I'm smacking you. you know? So they, they don't say it's their violent action. It's, they say it's your fault. It's something you did that caused them to smack you. So a lot of children, by the time they're five years of age, already believe to a large extent that most of the unloving behaviour perpetrated towards them is their fault. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. It's because they are bad somehow. Uh -huh. you know, that's, that's the feeling. Now, sexual predators are very, very sensitive to that feeling in a child. Can you see why? Because the sexual predator gets to, gets to abuse the child and the child would automatically feel that it must be their fault. And nobody has to say anything to them about it. The child will feel that it was their fault. So they feel sexually dirty and ashamed and they feel as a result, this is as a result of any perpetration of a sexual abuse, and they, are, in addition to that, feel that it's all their fault. Now, the sexual predator is very, very open to that feeling in the child. So whenever the child has, a, has, a, has this feeling in, a, in the child that it, whatever will happen to them that's negative has to be their fault, this is an attraction to sexual predators. And in fact, the sexual predators often have spirits with them who are sexual predators who, who mark out the child, children in advance. That, so they walk into the room and already the sexual predator knows the ch child because the spirits with the sexual predator are telling the, the adult predator who's in the, in the flesh, are telling him who is actually open to this concept or idea about themselves. So I actually did exactly what he needed by not telling anyone. He knew I wouldn't. Correct. Yeah. He knew you wouldn't. Mm -hmm. He knew you so wouldn't. You couldn't get caught. Yep. I couldn't describe the car or anything. Yep. Yeah. He knew, he knew you wouldn't be able to because you had already accepted that it was all your fault. Wow. Great. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. And by the, cho by the time most children are three, four, five years of age, they already have these strong beliefs that anything negative that happens to them is their fault. And so this makes them very open and very easy for an adult sexual predator or an adult abuser to abuse the child and get away with it. Yeah. Now, in some cases, it's just very fortunate that they didn't have the circumstances and therefore couldn't abuse us. But many times you can feel their intention. So a child usually can feel the sexual intention of an adult quite significantly and then if the child thinks it's already their fault they already believe that the sexual attention coming from the adult is their fault mm -hmm. before the whole thing begins even mm -hmm. yeah. so the child has been prepared really by its environment to accept this feeling that it is all their fault yeah and it's very sad when you think about it isn't it because mm -hmm. the average adult the average adult parent wouldn't conceive that whenever they say to their child, it's your fault that I'm smacking you, and basic things like that, that they're actually preparing their child yeah. to accept the blame of adult perpetrators of abuse, the average parent wouldn't believe that, that that's actually what's happening psychologically. So educating children to protect themselves still couldn't... Doesn't help. It still happens because spot on. they can spot that child that's not going to tell no matter what. They can spot the they, child, yeah. and not only can they spot the child, but the spirits with them. So there's a certain emotional thing that happens inside the child, and there's a colour that starts appearing in the, in, in the tummy region of the child that a sexual predator just can scan the room, and I'm talking about a spirit one now, can scan the room and see every child who has that particular colour in their bowel region of their body, and the second chakra region of their body. They can see exactly who those people are, and they, they'll target them straight away. They'll motivate the sexual predator to target those particular people. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. And it will only be circumstances that prevent the abuse from occurring because the reality is the child's emotions are already open to accepting the abuse. Yeah. 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 That's, that's great. Thank you. Yeah. And this is why a lot of people say, well, my parents didn't abuse me, but my brother-in-law or you know my father's brother or someone abused me or my uncle or my grandfather did or whatever and this is because 
there is this preparation going on inside of the child emotionally from the environment that the child's growing up in that's causing the child to accept the blame of very negative events that the child is involved in rather than seeing that the child's not to blame. Yeah. yeah. Okay, Nina? Yes. So my question was going to be on shame, so this is really good. Um, I've, for a long time, I've been waking, when I wake up, like I wake up in a state of fear. Yep. But that's been changing where I'm feeling really hot and I'm associating that with shame. So I'm obviously also um, getting um, spirit influence in my sleep state around the injury of the shame. Remember, there are two causes of your shame. And I'm real. I thought at first I thought it would be all sexual, but I'm feeling like it's an all-pervasive shame, just almost for my the fact that I'm here. Um, yeah, I, I also feel that it is, has sexual connotations for yourself yeah. as well. Yeah. But if you if you think about you as an adult now, so you're an adult, you're a woman in this case, and you're feeling shame, there can only be two causes of your shame. So what did I just say were the causes? One is that it's someone else's shame that they perpetrated upon you when you were a child that's still within you now as an adult. So that's one, isn't it? So yeah. you could say someone else's or others' shame. right? And the second one is? What I have done. What you have done. So in other words, personal, your personal actions. Yeah. So self can be the other cause of your shame. Now, the majority of people um, generally blame all shame just on themselves. I mean, that's not accurate because, because not all shame is your own. As, as can be seen, when you're a child in particular, other people did things to you. Whether those people were in spirit or on earth, it's immaterial. They still right. might have done things to you. And that causes you to feel shame of some kind. Now... A lot of events that happen to people in the spirit world are, are just as sec sexual in nature as events that happen on earth. And so sometimes it's sexual events that happen in the spirit world that cause this shame to build up. But there is this aspect of self that I must recommend the majority of you do not run away from. So there's the other stuff that we've just talked about, but there's this factor of self as well that we need to be very careful we do not run away from in fact we're going to be very tempted to run away from that and blame all of our shame once we hear the, the explanation I just gave blame all of our shame on other people and something that occurred in our childhood and not all of our shame is the result of other people or what occurred in our childhood in fact a lot of our shame comes from a law of compensation of what we have chosen to do as an adult and in our sleep state, we choose to do many things that we would not normally choose to do in our awake state. And the reason why is that in our sleep state, we have no what you would classify as socialised checks or restrictions on our boundaries of behaviour. So in other words, what you could get away with on earth, right? you will definitely get away with in the spirit world, but what you can't get away with on earth, you might still be able to get away with in the spirit world. So look at re my um, rebelliousness? Well, I would look at, firstly, uh, your first feelings. You need to learn how to trust your first feelings. So your first feelings were waking up, feeling quite afraid, feeling quite ashamed, and feeling that it was sexual in nature. Does that make sense? And yes, to be blunt with you, there are things that you are doing in your sleep state that are sexual in nature that in your awake state you would be ashamed of. Does that make sense? And you don't want to come face to face with that particular issue. Now, the reason why you choose to do those, some, some of those things are related to what others did to you when you were in your childhood, but, but there are choices you are making as an adult that cause you to wake up in your shame. Now, the average person who wakes up in shame or fear instantly chooses to get away from the shame and fear. And usually they do that by jumping out of bed, getting themselves busy, trying to make their day busy, having a cup of you know, drink, whether it's a cup of tea or a hot drink generally, because hot drink will make you feel less fear. And, and, you, and usually take some kind of addictive uh, drink or, or food 
in other words, high carbohydrate breakfast, uh, with, along with a cup of coffee or a cup of tea, you know, this is a very common action, to get away w with the feelings, in other words, to push the feelings back down again. Yeah? And, and there are many things that, that you are doing uh, that I've personally observed in your sleep state, <laughs> um, wow. right? So, so that, that are related to your own shame. And so I've got no memory of being sexually abused in my childhood. Are you saying that that actually something did happen? No, I'm not saying that something did happen, but I'm saying that you were prepared for such right. yep, that a makes, feeling that makes sense. through other things that were projected at you as a child. Mm. And there was a lot of this emotion projected at you that you are to blame. Mm. And this is why you have so much terror in you now, along with, as I've discussed with you at other times, the terror that comes from the multi-generational yeah. terror of having, you know, grandparents that lived in war-torn areas. And parents. Yeah, and parents who lived in war-torn areas. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah, which makes you open to such things. But now you are choosing to act out many of these things in your sleep state that you wouldn't be comfortable doing in your awake state because if you did it in your awake state, a lot of people would know that you're doing it. <laughs> Does that make sense? But in your sleep state, everybody's doing it, so it doesn't matter. Does that make sense? And the reality is the majority of people, even in this auditorium, are doing many sexual things that they would be ashamed of if they, knew, if they remembered them in their awake state while they're asleep. Because there are far less social checks on your behaviour when you're asleep. Does that make sense? 